Ouch. Ah, oh, there we go. There we go. What's up? There we go. Cam and Dan BR. NASCAR Bros is in. Gonna let the stream boot up for a minute. Get all these new arrivals ready to go. Talk about Kansas weekend. Talk about upcoming Bristol weekend. All the fun stuff related to that. And uh, kind of go along from there. So we got plenty to talk about here tonight. All right. Hey, AJ Gaming. Welcome in. Luckily, we got some uh, new arrivals to take a look at. I'm going to go pick a few up here, get them ready to go. All right. Oh, gosh. All right, one more, one more trip. Oh, there we go. Okay, it's Bristol, baby. Yeah, it is Bristol week. I am so excited. This is my favorite week of the year. Oh, all right. Bristol's going to be lit. Fourth race you ever been to. Well, hands down, man. It's going to be a fun race. I can't wait to go. I hope it's a good race. I really hope we don't end up with some kind of messy, bad race like Martinsville was in the spring. But only way to find out is to go and find, watch for myself. Mm. All right. All right. There we go. All right, well, let's go to the bottom of these chats here. Kansas was a 2 out of 10 because there was no reason for Harvard Direct. Chastain has to stop. Um, Chastain is going to be Chastain, man. Um, but no, it was a good race. I thought it was nice. I like the fact that the race didn't end with a boatload of just garbage yellows and stuff. I like how it kind of ran out and had a green flag pit stop sequence, so you had to, you know, kind of be really running well. When am I leaving? I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon. Just found Kyle Larson's Texas win diecast. Nothing's all-star win, but the playoff win. I was thinking about buying it. What about everyone else? Uh, well, if you're looking for the 164th, um, it looks like this. And the elites are coming in. I don't have them yet. They're going to be here soon, though. Um, let's see. When's the Bubba Wallace Talladega supposed to be in? Um, I, I would think it should be here in the next couple weeks. I thought it was going to come out this week, but I haven't seen anything on it yet. So uh, the uh, ARC is out, and usually the Elite's right behind it. So, uh, But that's the uh, 164th, so that's another one we'll get to take a look at tonight. Kansas was a great race. It was um, just a nice, solid, all-around race. The racing was good. The Xfinity race was real good until the rain came. It's really too bad that race didn't play out. That Xfinity race was great. Good, solid racing all the way through the field. Um, obviously I'm a Brett Moffat fan, so him being back at the track was fun to see. Um, got a top 10. That wasn't even a good run, really. I mean, that car was as fast as, uh, top five. So just, unfortunately, the way that the rain came, it kind of got him, uh, 
to finish in an unfortunate spot, but uh, ho- I hope he gets that opportunity again because I'm telling you that 07 was flying, um, especially as the run came in because once it got to the end of the run, he was right there with Noah Gragson on lap time. So if he can just if he wouldn't have started 16th uh, stage one, he he may have been a top three contender. But um, yeah, it was it was great. I mean, just good to see all good hit, see him back at the track and um, obviously Noah winning was pretty cool too. I just wish it wasn't under rain. I I really don't like the um, you know it, it sucks for fans when you have to just watch a race go yellow and that's just the end of it um it is nice they at least got it to race it out to the end of stage two wasn't just a random yellow they had a chance to get a at least a shot at a restart but um i don't know i like i said i've never liked stage racing where they have this arbitrary caution that's gonna fly two laps after a restart i think those are silly so um but anyway guys let's go ahead and get digging in here if you haven't already do give it a thumbs on up we got two likes in the comments or in the whatever you want to call it so far we're going to go ahead and bounce on in to our um, new arrivals. So we'll start with a 164th. Um, seems like the best way to start it, I guess. Maybe I'm wrong. But we're going to start with Chase Elliott's first 164th to come out, at least that I've gotten. And it is the 2022 Unifirst Chevy Camaro ZL1. Uh, and it is the next-gen car. So it's the first one of Chase Elliott's I've seen. You can see it right there. It is a pretty solid looking car. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this color scheme. Never have been. Um, oh yeah, I didn't even show. Before I go too fast, I did get one autograph at Kansas. I got Corey LaJoy. Um, he was at Trackside Live, so I was able to get him to sign this car. A uh, very cool car. Pretty unique uh, with the whole Scooby-Doo uh, paint scheme on it. So I was able to get him to, to sign that one. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, so it was awesome to, to meet Corey there. He, I uh, had a chance to uh, see him down in the pits, not not actually like in the pit passes or anything, but I got to see his helmet, and he had a really cool green looking helmet, so it was pretty sweet. He was in the Circle B car this weekend, but yeah, just wanted to show that off because it's kind of a cool car, and then now it's got a real nice signature on it, so just a neat, neat car in my opinion. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and move on to that Chase Elliott car. Let's go ahead and set this down for the 164s at least. We'll pop it back up for the 124s, but there's our 164. You can see it's got like silver rims or at least a not completely black rim um, on that on the wheels here. Uh, you can see I don't do the metal chassis anymore on the next gen cars. Once they started taking the rubber tires off, I decided we're going to the plastic chassis from here on out um, just because for the cost, it makes more sense. Um, so that's what we're, we decided to go with. Um, but yeah, so this, this one, um, came out as well as his Lumar car. Um, so yeah, we're going to have, uh, both of those taking a look at, but this is our, our Unifirst one. I really like it. Um, I, I, when I say I really like it, it's the least favorite Elliott scheme, but at least it's an Elliott car. So that's got to count for something, even if it's, you know, all of it. All right. So let me move this off to the side so I can get this set over all right so our next 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 gen next 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 gen this next next gen <laughs> weird to say it like that uh this is going to be probably my i don't know what i would call it it's it's a boring scheme but it's kind of like a level of iconic i guess uh but this one is going to be joey logano's 2022 shell and penzoil car you can see it right there. Let's go ahead and zoom it in just a smidge. I can zoom it in a little bit. Oh, there we go. Now we're really close. Uh, so there's the Shell Next Gen car. You can see the Penske cars went with like a chrome style wheel this time around. Um, not sure if I'm a huge fan of it. I, I don't think it looks bad by any stretch. Um, just not sure if it's something I'm like really behind. So um, looks looks okay. I, I won't say it looks, you know, like I said, I won't say it looks bad. But it is a little interesting. Um, the, what I will say that I've noticed more than I thought I would before is the vents on the hood. You can see those pretty consistently all the way around the car. The nose is, yeah, looks okay. I don't think it looks too bad. And the sides look pretty good. So the, I will say the 164s, it looks like a lot of the decal flaws that we were seeing on the Gen 6s are at least a little bit ironed out. I haven't seen quite as many just blatant errors. So they're at least cleaning it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I think that one looks pretty darn good. I will say the uh, the spoilers on them are still absolutely monstrous, like just way too tall on them. So yeah, spoilers. <laughs> For some reason, the spoilers are still absolutely mammoth. Um, okay, so next one we're going to look at, uh, this is actually going to be a car from the 2021 season. This is that raced version I was talking about. The winner from the Kansas Speedway and the... Um, 
Gosh dang it, I forgot my pin. Anyway, uh, and the Hollywood Casino 400, presented by Barstool Sportsbook. Uh, this is Bubba Wallace's McDonald's uh, first career win. And um, you'll notice it's on a base, so McDonald's, for some reason, needs to be on a base. Don't ask me why, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, you see, we do have a little mark there. Got our ethanol ring. You can see it's pretty clean, though. Four little pieces of tape on the um, on the uh, hood pins. A couple little marks over here, but pretty clean. Uh, it was a race that was ended in the rain, so not a lot of burnouts, nothing like that. Um, but I do, I will say, I do like this McDonald's paint scheme a lot more than the other ones. So, um, yeah, we're waiting for the Elite to come out. The ARCs are out, uh, but the Elites are not quite ready yet. So as soon as those Elites come out, um, I'll have them ready to roll. But unfortunately, still, still playing the waiting game. But yeah, that's our, uh, that's our Bubba Wallace car. I think it's. I don't know if it'll be a really rare car down the road, honestly. It could be rare, but it also could be just normal because it may be overproduced. Um, but I thought that about the Elliott win, too. And Elliott's first win was overproduced, in my opinion. And yet, here we are a couple years later, and it's, you know, really valuable car. So, um, as the sport kind of grows, it might kind of grow into that. But, you know, we really don't know until we, uh, until we see it, I guess. So, we're going to go ahead and put that one up on the stack and move on to our next car. Next car is going to be, unfortunately, in my opinion, a car that has been butchered by the next gen. It was a paint scheme that was probably one of my all-time favorites, or one of my favorite paint schemes last year. And this year, it's nothing but a memory. This is William Byron's 24 Exalta car. Um, the color combination still looks really, really good. I've always been a fan of this Exalta paint scheme, giving William Byron kind of his own look on the car, not making him constantly use the flames and the Jeff Gordon, like letting Byron have kind of his own look and identity to the car but that being said they moved the number up and i mean i'd be lying to you if i said it looked good it doesn't look that great honestly but you know it is what it is can't fix it now can't change it uh hopefully someday they fix it and bring the numbers back where they belong in the middle um anyone who says they look better where they are you're lying to yourselves but um yeah so I said, I like the car. I think it looks good. It's still a solid paint scheme. Just, I don't know, not as good as the, uh, not as good as what the, uh, Gen 6 looked like with the door, with the numbers centered in the door. So, but, uh, yeah, still a good paint scheme. So that's our first Byron of the year. Uh, but we actually got two Byrons in this time around. Uh, but the next one we're actually going to look at is going to be the Kyle Larson. Uh, let's see. I gotta read it quick. The box says we're looking at the Texas win. So we're looking at the Kyle Larson Texas win. Like I said, we're still waiting on some 124s. Uh, the Kansas wins, which I'm excited for because that'll be in my collection, uh, are not quite in yet. So the 124s are coming, I believe, next week uh, because they just came out from Lionel, so now they are in shipment, and they'll be probably arriving somewhere around Monday, Tuesday, something like that. Oh, excuse me. But you can see here we do have the little bit of confetti. Obviously, the playoff markings are the big thing in my opinion. I always love playoff markings on race cars. Just, I don't know, I'm a sucker for them. Can't really explain why. It just is that way. So, you know, that's just how it's going to be, guys. Deal with it. Um, but, yeah, I think it's a good car. I did think that they had a little bit on this right side they could have done more with. I thought it just looked really plain and, frankly, not a lot of detail to it. So, I don't know. I wouldn't say it's a, a terrific car. Oh, I'm going to slide that car out of the way. There we go. Uh, but you can see the right front's got at least a little bit of raced, um, race markings to it. Charge my phone. You are dying. I must charge you. There we go. What am I doing here? Tip, tip, tippity tip. There we go. I'm not going to slide it up that way. There we go. How about that? That looks good. And now that it looks good, I'm going to take it away. But you can see we do have texture shaped confetti on there. So we do got some pretty decent stuff. Uh, but we'll have to wait until we get the 124s to get much better looking. Uh, or a much better look at the detail on here. Um, live chat. There we go. I need to go to live chat here so I can read. There we go. All right. Let's see here. Let's go up the charts here. Um, whoop, da, boop. Wow. I don't wait. McDonald's on a base. Yes. Um, I don't be mad if Harvick misses around a 12 due to NASCAR stupidity. It's cheaper not to fix it. Um, yeah, I mean, but here's the thing. Kevin Harvick ran like five extra laps. Um, everyone else that had a fire 
throughout the season was able to come in and put the fire out. But if you can't, if you keep running, you give yourself no chance for the fire to go out. So, I mean, I can't blame Harvick specifically, but there are certainly steps that could have been taken to potentially preserve it. And then Kansas is still just arrow tight. I mean, there's nothing that said Harvick couldn't back out. You know, yeah, Harvick, I mean, had a, had a line. There's nothing that says he had to stick in it, though, 30 laps into the race. He could have backed out and lived to fight another day. Not saying it was his fault. It wasn't, but, you know, it's one of those things you have to look back on, it, especially with him and his his specific point situation after, um, after Darlington. Uh, he had to be more careful, and unfortunately it didn't work out. Uh, let's see. All right, going down here, going down here. Woo, scrolling. Okay, I'm just going to skip to the bottom. There we go. Um, didn't catch fire. He'd make it to the final four. Yeah, did, that's opinion. But anyway, here we go. So this is the Byron Liberty car. You can see we do have the black, or not black, sorry. It's a navy blue and white flamed car here. Uh, we got our number 24. We got Liberty. I don't know. This is another version, an example of a car that easily could have had the number moved back to the door. And unfortunately, it's not. So, not a huge fan of that. Um, let's see here. Oh, you guys are all just having fun at. Uh, you guys are having fun jabbing at each other over Harvick and and uh, Elliot. I will say this. I think Elliot's got a pretty um, pretty easy shot to get in um, at Bristol. Just keeping it clean. Um, basically, he just has to finish. That's about it. I think he has to finish a minimum of seventh, and that's under the impression that everyone scores max points, which is not even close to realistic in terms of who's going to be able to score a bunch of points. So realistically, by stage two, if he scores eight stage points in one and six in the other, you know, just to be decently top five runs in both stages, he'll be locked in um, by the time they get to the third stage, which unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, every year I've been down to Bristol so far, that's how it's been. Elliot has been um, not locked in going into the race, but by the end of stage two, he has enough stage points and enough cars have fallen out of the race to lock him in. I mean, it's every year it's been like that. I can't explain why it doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, but Harvick's going to be in a must win and Kyle Busch is going to need to perform not must win, but I'm excited. I think Kyle Busch is going to come out and really surprise us uh, this weekend, which I'm kind of excited for. I, I have not gotten to see Kyle Busch win at Bristol and he's just the king there. I mean, I got to see it, man. So um, I'm, I'm excited. So uh, anyway, that's the end of the car or the, the William Byron Liberty car. I'm going to slide my, my current Mountain Dew out of the way. Um, let's see. Yeah, we'll, we'll do all the 164s first because then I can move the tripod up to the 124th angle and we can get a better look at them. Um, okay, so the next one we're going to take a look at, this is Chase Elliott's Lumar car. Um, this one here is another one of those ugly paint schemes that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, like I said, it's an Elliott car, so it's something, but man, this paint scheme just, yeah, not a great looking car. It's just not. I mean, I could lie to you guys and tell you it's the greatest car ever, but it's not. It's just not. Uh, you have a concussion. What'd you do? crash in a next gen car all right there we go so there you can Ooh, there's a little mark on there let's see here see that comes off or not that's our first defect it isn't terrible but i've certainly seen it worse but there you can see it uh on the lumar there's a black dot it is what it is so this one won't make it to the website this one will end up in my uh my little set and i will use it eventually someday when i do downhill diecast races so I gotta build the course and all that kind of stuff. But once it's done, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna make a lot of videos. So, uh, yeah, that's the Lumar car. Uh, fight in school. Well, that's that's not a good way to do it. At least you could earn it doing a legendary story, like you know, jumping three school buses. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the Lumar paint scheme does look bad. Uh, the card better be the card better in person. I think he's in the car. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think the cars look okay. I just, I mean, I was standing up close to him this weekend and I just don't think they look right. Like the number being in the front of the door, it's on a seam where the body panels meet. So there's literally a, a body line right through the middle of the numbers. And personally, in my opinion, I just don't think a body over the, or a, a number with a, you know, body line through it looks very good. 
Now that being said, this is probably one of my favorite next gen cars thus far. This is Ryan Blaney's Advanced Auto Parts car. Um, this one, it's got actually a really sneaky little checkered flag design here on the front. You can see the black uh, in matte, and then you almost have like a matte gray that kind of makes it function like a checkered flag in the light. So you can see that we got the the checkered front to it. Um, does stay flat blacked on the side, and then we do have our silver rims as Penske has shifted to silver rims. Uh, for this season, so kind of a neat thing that the Penske cars have. Um, that's all three of them, too. That's Logano, um, Cindric, and Blaney all have it. I don't know if the Wood Brothers car does, but I know the other ones do. Ugh, try not to sneeze. Okay, so yeah, this is the, um, the Internet's you know, car. This is probably one of my favorite paint schemes so far. Might even pick this one up at uh, Bristol if I see it. Uh, also, there is a Checkers or Wreckers version of this car, but with red numbers. And it's red foil numbers, so they're going to look pretty cool. But um, that is actually available for pre-order on the website. So if you're looking for it, you can find it over at the rasdiecast.com link. Um, it's going to be the best option for um, for that car is, is putting in the promo code RACECRAZE at checkout. Um, also, do note for anyone there... Um, the, the website now has gone to a chart or a, it, it bills when the order is placed. Um, that is to prevent and make it a lot easier for when they come in. I can ship them straight out uh, because right now every order that comes in, I have to text, call, email um, and get everything squared away because I don't store information because it's not cyber safe. Um, so it's actually a lot easier to just do it up front. And then when the item comes in, just ship it out. So that's what we're going to do from now on. Um, it's probably not the easiest thing, but it also is kind of nice because you don't end up getting stuck with a big uh, uh, surprise load of die cast. You have it budgeted in because you took care of it beforehand. So um, so that's all the website's going to go. Just wanted to give everybody a heads up on that. Um, now, there is still the option to hit PayPal for pre-orders, especially if you got a bunch of them coming. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely... Um, that's definitely th something that is changing. So I wanted to let you know. Uh, all right, another question here I see. When am I going to get the Cindric 500 Win Elites uh, for your website? Um, they should be coming in in a little bit. I didn't have the option to offer them um, on a pre-order, but they will. I will have at least one extra. I try to have one of every race win on, on hand. Um, so that'll be on the website as soon as they come in. Probably still a month away, though, because they're not even at the racetrack yet, as far as I can tell. So, um, fingers crossed. We'll be seeing them soon, but uh, I, think, I think I still got a little ways to go yet. Uh, but anyway, let me slide this uh, Blaney one off to the side here. And we're going to move on to... we only got uh, three more to go. No, yeah, three? Yeah, three. Three more to go. Uh, one of them here is actually going to be the Charlotte Rovalwin. Um, so, we're going to take a look at that one here. And then... We've got uh, two more next gens, and then we're on to our 124th, which we got some banger 124s. <laughs> All right, so there's the Robo one. Obviously, you can tell there's a problem. We have no pink window net, so that is a problem that will need to be solved. Not sure what the method's going to be to make it look correct, but there is something that needs to be had uh, in terms of effort because, yeah, needs a pink window net. But now, I will say the 124 and the 124 Elite does have a pink window net. It's just the 164 that's missing its window net, so can't really explain why. It's just is what it is, unfortunately, but, yeah, that's one that definitely needs a little work. So, um, yeah. It looks pretty good, though. I just, I said, without the pink window net, it's, it's just another Kyle Larson win. <laughs> just another Kyle Larson win. To be fair, he won seven times in the playoffs. And I think we're down to our. We only need one more, uh, can or one more playoff win for Kyle Larson. And that's Kansas, because the 164 Phoenix wins already came out. So uh, we still got a few of everybody else though. All right, so let me slide that Larson back in there, and then we'll move on to Eric Jones. Now Eric Jones, we've already gotten one uh, in. That was the Focus Factor car, actually the paint scheme he won with at Darlington. Uh, but now we're going to get a chance to see the Air Force car. This was the second one for Eric Jones that was released, and you can see it here. It is. Um, it looks kind of black on the camera, but it's actually like a very dark green. Um, so it, it just looks a little different. But uh, the red number on top looks good. Um, I don't know. I think the metal style with the whole rivets and stuff was a neat style they tried. I just think the the gray one looked the best. So still a good paint scheme, though. 
Um, it said, I think the wheels look pretty good though. They look like silver, but not like the Penske where it's like cheap. You know, it looks like kind of silver because it's silver on the inside, but it's not like caked silver like this where it's just straight up, you know, everything silver on it. It's just kind of partially silver. Um, so I think that looks better almost in my opinion. All right. So the na next, the next and also last one is going to be um, this one here. Uh, trying to figure out where is the opening on this one. There it is. I always had to look and make sure I can find the flap that's usually easiest to pop open. This is going to be Martin Truex Jr.'s Auto Owners Toyota. And this is our last of the 164s to look at. I got a bunch coming again next week, but this will be the last one before I leave for Bristol. So there's the 19 Auto Owners car. Um, the blue, white, and navy blue, uh, all in matte. Look pretty darn good, uh, as they always did. Uh, what is that? Oh, it's just a little fiber. I thought there was something on there. Um, but yeah, you can see it there. The windshield banner looks pretty darn good. Um, spoiler looks a little shorter, in my opinion. Maybe it's not. It might just be an illusion, but, um, but definitely, I think this is our first Truex one. His, his Bass Pro one's right on the way, though, so it'll be coming here, but, um, but yeah, so this car, um, personally, I would say it's the second best paint scheme. Maybe, maybe the third. I, I don't know. That Bass Pro red, white, and blue is also a pretty cool one. So, uh, but yeah, that'll be the last one of the 164s um, for tonight, at least. And then we're going to be taking a look at three or four 124s. Uh, now, some of them are already uh, spoken for, and you Harvick fans are going to like the one I show you, and it'll, the review will come out tomorrow, but it's already spoken for and will be shipping out to its rightful uh, home. Uh, for those of you who have not seen it, you can check out um, the the channel, I believe it's MMCS. Um, it's going to be uh, Stop Motion. If you guys haven't seen MMCS's Stop Motion stuff, um, but he has actually got a one. He's getting a few of these 164s, and he's also getting uh, this. I'm trying to get it popped out here, if I can. Um, this Kevin Harvick car that I'm struggling with mightily. These new boxes suck, for those who don't know. Nothing you can do about it, but the boxes are not great. So, just in case you guys are wondering, the boxes are still not great. And I don't think that's going to change. There we go. So there's... Oh, i got to pull this up. It's got to be taller. Yep. Oh, still got to zoom it out. It's going to about there. Uh, let's see, I got my charger hooked up. There we go, just like that. That looks good. There. That looks good. There we go. So this is Kevin Harvick's Bush Light Car. Like I said, this one... Uh, actually, let me see. Is Blake in the chat? Um, uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. My gosh, you guys are chatting faster than I can keep up with. I'm not even close. Look at that, man. Wow. There we go. Oh, okay, there we go. I just got to yours, A-Shot Creative. Uh, yes, the one you pre-order on the website, that'll be, like I said, in, in just a few weeks. And basically, I already emailed you, so you, I have your email contact, and that, that's what'll happen, basically. As soon as it shows up, actually, I'll probably email you a couple days ahead of time. That way, I can make it go a little bit faster, because I know that one I don't have to hold an extra on hand, because I'll have one that I'm doing my review on. Like this one here, um, I'm going to review, and then it's going right off. Like, I'm not keeping this one, so I have to, you know, ship it the day after where... You know, with that one, I'll have my own to do a review on so I can ship that one straight out to you. But um, just make sure as soon as you start seeing pictures or people that have posted them, that means yours will be coming. Uh, mine is always a little delayed because it's got to go through uh, North Carolina before it gets to me. So, um, But as soon as you start seeing them, just be prepared for that email and, and be ready to roll with it. And then as soon as it comes in, I'll ship it. But yeah, anyway, uh, this is Harvick's Bush light car. Um, honestly, I like the, the, the scheme of the car. The silver and the blue look really nice. Um, I will say I did not think the next gen car looks very good, but I'm kind of digging this car. The silver and blue are just a good combination. I think it would look good with the number in the middle, obviously, but it's a good combination of colors between that kind of bluish silver and the actual silver. So, um, and race crazy, you're going to do videos on mine, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like I said, any... 
any cars, I, if I do a review on them, I always ask permission first. But you gave me the good go-ahead, so as soon as I believe the Mobile One car also showed up. So when that Mobile One car comes in, you'll see that review. Um, and that'll be probably in a couple weeks. But yeah, like I said, um, that's where this one's going. So it's not going to be one that uh, that you'll see available on the website. Um, but it will be one that you guys can uh, pick up or message me about. I just I don't plan on stocking uh, standard 120 or 160. Can't speak. 124s. But, yeah, I think this one looks great. I love it. Big number on the roof. Big number on the door. Just looks like a good, solid car. So, uh, if I was a Harvick fan, I'd be on it. But I'm not. So, uh, but, yeah. So, that one will have a review. You'll actually see that one probably tomorrow or sometime this weekend. I got a bunch of reviews to do tonight after the stream. Because I'm leaving tomorrow. So, I have to have all these reviews ready to post. Uh, so, that way you guys have some content while I'm gone. Um, let's see. So, the next one we're going to take a look at is going to be... Actually, we're going to... Pause. We're gonna do a couple other, couple of, couple of ones in the middle. All right. So here's a couple of things for the middle. Let's see what we got here. Oops, dropped it. I have a couple of pins that are going on the website. One of them is here. This is the Ally 400 pin from Nashville. Uh, these will be on the website. Uh, that's the one from when Chase Elliott won, and this will be the New Hampshire win for Christopher Bell. So that pin will be available on the website as well. Got don't have very many of those. So normally a pin a pin starts at like ten dollars when I have like ten to twenty of them. Uh, once I get down under five available, it goes up to like twelve or twelve fifty something like that. And then if I get to my last pin, it's up like fifteen sixteen bucks. So the New Hampshire ones will be like uh, twelve or the sorry the Nashville ones will be twelve fifty. And the other ones will be 15 because um, I only have two of them. But, uh, yeah, so at least the pins are still available. I was able to snag a couple and get them uh, before they ran out of them. And so I wanted to make sure I could share those with you guys. But let's go ahead and take a look at our next 124th. Um, NASCAR Productions, let's crack a lacking. Oh, well, we got some new race versions. I can't, can't argue with that fact. Um, let's see, I'm just going to set this box off to the side. You'll see the box in the review when it comes around. So this is probably my most anticipated win from the Xfinity series. Uh, well, maybe not most. It's, it's one of them though, but this is Daniel Hamrick's championship winning car from Phoenix. You can see it is dirty all over the front, the nice poppy bank scheme, which we didn't get a single die cast of last year. And then you got Hamrick and the bright yet red Xfinity banner. Uh, now this is the side everyone wants to see. It is dirty. We got donuts all down the right side here. Uh, I actually do have uh, these available on the website. So um, if they're not in stock yet, they will be by the end of the night. And I'll try to update the photos with it too. Uh, so I have, you know, bright, shiny car photos instead of, a, you know, just a render. But looking very, very sharp. So I am really excited for that one. And what would you, what would you say if I told you that that is not even the most raced up version in this stack because the next one is the car that came out of talladega as the truck series winner that's right for those of you that don't remember the truck series winner pile drove the inside lane or sorry the inside wall while crossing the finish line and it did have a really cool looking paint scheme so look at this we've got the number 12 true timber paint scheme which is a awesome looking paint scheme by the way you can see, or sorry, not True Timber. Oh, I, I should not have said that. It's Traeger. Traeger Wood Fire Girls. I thought it was True Timber. Whoops. Sorry about that. Uh, True Timber is Noah's uh, sponsor. But you can see uh, there is a little bit of damage up here on the right front. So you can see they put some tape on it. Um, you can see our number 12. You can see a couple of wheel marks up there, too, along the front. But it's a very shiny car. You can see it's very glossy. Very shiny. Um, get to the back. You got Fogelman on the window. It's full, you know, everything looks pretty good. You say everything looks good. Right side, you can tell a little damaged. Here's where the fun starts. Look at that left side. He caked the inside wall. You can see wheel marks. You can see wall scrapes all on the along this left side. Um, I said uh, never had an 02 or a 12 car for or especially a Tate Fogelman car. So definitely a cool one there um, to see a Tate Fogelman car, especially how raced up it is. I mean, this thing is absolutely beat up. Um, so I think it's a pretty cool car. And like I said, I do. I don't know if anyone had gotten one of these. I know someone had said they were going to, but I don't know if it ever actually went through. But I do have these on the site as well, or at least I will, as soon as, um, as I said, as soon as I get my website stuff updated tonight. So, uh, yes, this is also a really raced up version that came in today. So pretty, pretty cool. Pretty excited for that one. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I loved my Chandler Smith Bristol win because obviously I was there. But that is a really good looking raced version uh, to come out of Talladega. 
And our last one, that's right guys, the last one. I don't have any more to show you, at least for tonight, uh, until the next batch comes in next week. And this is going to be one that I'm actually going to have in my personal collection uh, once it comes out in the autographed edition, because I always get my uh, car's autograph that I've seen in person. Uh, did I just, was that, hold on, I think I just dropped something. I wanna double check. Did I drop the winner sticker? I think I did. So is it on the floor behind me? Gosh darn it. This is why you gotta be careful. You can't be all loosey goosey. Loche goche. No, oh, it must have been loosey goosey. Where to go? I felt it hit my leg. Where to go? 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 No, oh, I don't know. I'll have to look later. Um, but anyway, this one, until I find it, I guess I'll just assume that it's in a, another dimension. This is the most raced up car of the year. Maybe not done accurately, but this is uh, AJ Allmendinger's Bristol win from the Xfinity Series. A amazing race. Absolutely spectacular. You can see there's literally door foam sticking through on that number. Um, you can see the right side looks like it's supposed to be beat up, but it's not. Um, you can actually see some right side damage there. You can see a couple of tire marks there on the right side as well. Um, and then you can see the right side wheels are completely beat up. Now, I know they didn't crash it, and I'm here's my thing. Honestly, I would rather them get rid of that door foam mark, because that happened in the crash, and just have it look like it did when it crossed the finish line, because I can always, you know, damage a car to try and make it look better. But because of this, it doesn't look like it did when it crossed the line either. So you can't have either. You can't have, you can either have how it sat in victory lane, dot, 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 in the pits because it was destroyed or you can have it sit like it did uh, when it crossed the line and this one they kind of did a middle or an in-between they did a no damage to the back but yet they have the damage to the door so a little weird but it is a cool car like i said it'll go great in my bristol wind collection um obviously getting to see this race live definitely a cool one to have don't get me wrong definitely gonna look great lionel said they were up to the task they weren't but that's okay um no, I shouldn't say that's okay. It's it's not. I wish it was better. I mean, I'd have I'd be lying if I said I didn't. But um, I don't know. I think it still looks like a pretty good car. It'll still be a cool one to have a story for uh, in my in my case. So I can't say too much on it from there. But um, but anyway, guys, that actually is the last one I have for the new arrivals. Um, but like I said, I did have those new pins. Uh, hopefully by next week I'll have some pegboard to hang a bunch of these cars up so they won't be, I can actually kind of show them off a little easier. Um, so I kind of, I, I'm excited for when that finally happens because then I'll be able to easily show you guys all the stuff that's on hand for these cars. Um, let's take a look over here. You can see that's my case, pretty empty. Bunch of them packed up. I got hot passes for Bristol. Gonna try and get a few of those signed just to get that collection a little more, uh, signed up. I think the only other two or three that I need signed in that case that was over there was Harvick, Logano, and Bush. Um, so there's going to be a few different um, few different drivers I'm going to hopefully try and get some stuff signed by. Uh, worst case scenario, I have some extra cars there. But um, yeah, I just wanted to get that case uh, as close to all caught up as I could. Um, so yeah, Bristol starts tomorrow. I'll be leaving tomorrow night. I'm going to have reviews on almost everything you saw here done. Uh, hopefully by the end of tonight, and they'll be uploaded, and you'll be able to see them this weekend. Um, like I said, everything should be available on the website, minus that Harvick car, because, um, like I said, I, just, I don't have that one in stock. You can get it from me. Uh, you can message me. That's how um, that's how uh, Blake got it. Uh, he just messaged me and said, hey, can I get one? And so I picked it up. But um, like I said, uh, I'm going to try and start doing more pre-order stuff. So you can pre-order it, and then after two months, if it's not, if I have no pre-orders, I'm going to pull it from the site just because that allows me um, to to have a little bit more breathing room. So that way, I don't have uh, probably over 200 cars sitting in stock, <laughs> and I don't have to have them sitting here when um, I don't. I just have them sitting in a box. So that way, I can show you guys more videos and be more efficient. But anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the live stream. I'm going to take a few chats quick. Uh, let's go to live chat quick here. Um, there we go. Where is my favorite place to go sit at Bristol? Might try to go next year. Best place to sit, in my opinion, is the front stretch, uh, just either before or past the the grand, uh, or sorry, the start finish line. Uh, I think the not sitting in the corner helps because you can actually see um, 
everything is just generically closer. Um, you can kind of get a better view of basically every part of the action because um, you don't lose them in the in the turn when they go behind the wall. Um, but every seat in the house is good there. I'm telling you, Bristol, you can see anything from anywhere. It's amazing. It's one of the greatest places to watch a race. I don't think you can see well from the infield, but we're going to find out because I've got some infield passes for Xfinity Day, and I'm going to show plenty of videos for that, um, take plenty of pictures for you guys. So uh, we'll see how that works out. Um, so, yeah, that's where I sit. Uh, let's see. I'm going to scroll back up a little bit. Uh, remember, he wrecked John Hunter. Who wrecked John Hunter? Did Hemrick wreck John Hunter? Can I see a Larson Roval if I have it? Yes, you can see the Larson Roval. Oh, crap, I put it back. <laughs> Here's the 164 Larson Roval, if that's the one you're talking about. The 124 is not in yet. So that's what the 164 looks like, confetti and sides. The 124 will have the pink window net, though. All right, let me scroll back down. Do, 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 do. One of the least deserving champs. Uh Oh, yeah, I'd have to agree there. I, I did not care for the way that Hemrick just doored Cindric off the corner. Like, I don't know. I'm just not a big fan of that kind of thing happening, you know? Race craze. Which Kyle Larson diecast will you get next? I'm hoping it, to get his Phoenix win and then his Texas playoff diecast both in 124. Um, well, I actually have a bunch of his one six, or 124s in ARC available still because I think somebody asked to pre-order them, but I can't find the message or the email. So I have them ready for, for whoever it was. They were they said it on the chat here, um, but I got one ARC for uh, all the Larson's wins and then some of the Elliott and Bo, uh, Byron wins going into next year, but I can't find the messages anywhere. So I got to start um, getting better organization of those. But um, but anyway, my next one will be uh, his Kansas win. The next His Kansas win elite is coming next week. So being as I was at that race, that's going to go in the case right over there. I got a special spot for it all picked out. So that'll be the next Larson win that'll come uh, in. And, and then I'll have uh, probably Texas and uh, Charlotte right after that. So those will be the next ones on the Larson side. All right. I go to Richmond, Dover, Pocono, and try to go to Watkins Glen and Martinsville playoff race every year. Well, that's awesome that you got them, especially nice and decently close, too. Because uh, I'm driving 15 hours to go down there. <laughs> um, Pennsylvania is in the middle of all, all of them. See, it for a 15-hour drive to Bristol is a lot, but I, I love it. Uh, I didn't mind that. I just don't like how he went and stole it when someone... Uh, some Like, Noah did more, way more. Yeah, I mean, it's the format, though. I mean, right now, you could be talking about a great points battle in Xfinity. You know, Noah's got the faster car, but Almendinger just keeps running good races, so... Um, you know, this is kind of one of those seasons where, uh, Noah would, could potentially put a late charge in to try and catch AJ, but, um, you know, we don't have that format anymore. So, uh, going to run out of room soon. Um, actually, I think I will be out of room next year. Yep. Next year earlier. Oh, it, it was at Talladega. Yes, that was where... Okay, I couldn't remember when you said John Hunter. I was like, I don't know. The, the Tate Fogelman did, yes, for sure. Um, yes, my case will officially be full uh, next year. Now, I could theoretically take out a couple of runner-up cars. I have Larson's runner-up car from Chicagoland, and I have a De Benedetto runner-up car from 2019 Bristol. So I, I could take those two out... And that would add me two more spots, which would probably get me to the end of next year. Um, but that would be, that'll be it. And then I'll be full and I'll have to get another one. Luckily, there's a Jeff Gordon case right there. And that Jeff Gordon case can get emptied out and I can use that one. Because uh, I'm not a huge Jeff Gordon fan by any stretch. I've got a couple of cars I really like, but I don't really plan on keeping too many of them. So a lot of those will hit the eBay page as their time and day come. Um... All right, let's see here. Did I read how you got your concussion? You said you got it in school, like in a, it sounded like in a fighter. Uh, at least you got pushed or something. Uh, but I hadn't, I hadn't read through the whole thing. Uh, I want to go to Talladega ne next year. I've been taking a break from collecting and keeping everything I come across, save up. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> the collecting thing can get nuts, especially the nice thing is having the website allows me to do a lot more of these videos and not have to keep so many of them because 
if, if you haven't noticed on the website, you're going to start seeing a lot more of my collection show up there. Um, and it's going to be listed a little high and I'm going to try and bring it down to eventually get it at the, the market it's supposed to be at, like at a good fair number. Um, but I start high so that way I can, I can always bring it down quicker. Um, but, uh, yeah, you'll see there's a lot of them that are going on there. Um, a lot of, I think so far I've gotten most of the Truex, most of the Hamlin, Blaney, no, sorry, not the Blaney's, uh, Logano's and Harvick's on the website. So if you're looking for some older, and when I say older, we're talking all the way back to 2011 for some of the Harvick's and back to 2017 uh, for some of the Logano's. So those are on the site. Like I said, some of them are high. Uh, eventually, as I see more and more of them, I can kind of get a better idea what to leave the price at. But um, yeah, I have a lot more of them listed on there. Um, so you're going to see a lot more of that as time goes on because I'm trying to get them all listed because my actual collection is only going to be Chase Elliott wins, uh, Noah Gregson wins, Brett Moffat wins, the cars I've seen in person, the Daytona 500s, and then just some sporadic ones here or there. So uh, it's going to shrink dramatically. I hope I can do a, a big collection video before that happens, but I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. All right, let's see. I might go to two or three more. Don't know which ones yet. Uh, yeah, I'm just collecting Noah, them uh, 500 plus seniors and getting out of control. Uh, listed the Talladega Copper. Um, that's, yeah, the nice thing about it too is Noah has now won five races this year, so there's plenty of Noah Gragsons available. Um, actually, I think I got to get his Darlington listed, or not his Darlington, I got to get his Kansas win listed because they're making all five of his wins from this year. And um, so, yeah, I have, I think I got most of them up on the website so far, but. Um, it is nice that they make all of Noah's wins. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, happy to run out of room on my Hamlin shelf. That just means Hamlin needs two shelves. <laughs> the, uh, the nice thing is it's easy to say it's nice to have two shelves until he wins too quickly. And then all of a sudden your shelf is full. Um, my shelf was slowly filling up and all of a sudden in the last, uh, last little bit, it really filled up quick. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ooh, the Hamlin Darlington Elite's coming. Well, you're going to enjoy that one. Uh, that's going to be a really nice car. I did the review on that already, but it is really nice. Uh, I went to Dover this year, and it was my first in-person race, and I got to see my favorite driver, Chase Elliott, win first race you ever attended. Well, that's just good luck to get to see your favorite win on the first try, because I've been to a lot of races uh, between watching Casey Kane and Chase Elliott run, and, and in all the races, I've only seen Chase win once, and I never saw Casey Kane win. And yet somehow one of my least favorite drivers, Joey Logano, I've seen win four times. And my second, I'd say one of my other least favorites, at least until he went after NASCAR for the safety thing, because I really like Harvick for that. But before that, I wasn't too fond of Harvick. I've seen him win three times. So it's kind of ridiculous how I've seen them win so many times. Uh, but I have seen Kyle Busch win a couple times. I've seen a Truex win. I've seen... Uh, Brad Keselowski win, a couple Hamlin wins. Uh, so I have, I've seen a decent variety of drivers win. Just no more. N I have seen nobody win more than Logano. Um, let's see. Got seven spots left on the non-raced Harvick shelf. Well, I think I'll fill three of them for you. Uh, I have all those wins. 2018 Switch Door, 2020 Bristol Clean, uh, Chrome Din 1, and both versions of his first win and non-signed. Oh, oh, Paint Pen Red. Gotcha. Yeah, his... um. His Martinsville, I think, should be coming soon. And then, he's like I said, he's got five this year. So that's six different Noah cars coming in the next uh, next year, most likely. Uh, I got to see my favorite win, my first race I ever attended, the 2019 Daytona 500. Wow, that's, that's actually really good luck because that's also the Daytona 500. So I feel like at that point, you just have to have every single finish available. No, I've only done that once. And I didn't get every finish. I just got color chrome and, and liquid. But that's for, I have that car in liquid and color chrome just because I was at the race. Um, let's see here. Got picked off the ground and pushed in the air when the earth was pulling me down. I hit my head on the edge of a desk. So gravity is what hurts you. The laws of physics. They seem to have bit you. <laughs> um, might need to downsize a little bit to make them fit. Well, the good news is downsizing does help you afford the new ones. So that, that counts for something. have to stock up on some harvest race versions well the good news is if you're looking for them i have um i don't have his 2011 coke 600 car listed that one's 
That one's staying staying put. But I do have his 2011 Martinsville and 2011 Fontana win uh, autographed on the website. They they're like I said, they're high, but they are on there. And then I have a uh, bunch of 2015 or not 2015, sorry, 2019 and 2020. So, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's on the website there. It's on the RAS last weekend, and uh, I will also be going to Bristol this weekend. So a lot of busyness. And as the season closes, I'll be able to put a lot more effort into getting all that updated. And fingers crossed, I'll be able to get a nice big collection video done uh, for you guys. Because I want to make, I do want to make that video uh, where I can show off all the all the the diecasts. But um, yeah, gonna be uh, gonna be a long haul to get that done. It's it's a lot of work. So, um, but the good news is, guys, um, I am getting all packed up for Bristol, so I can't hang out too late here tonight because I gotta get all packed up because I am leaving tomorrow right after work. So I will actually be leaving for work and not coming back home till Sunday. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, make a bunch of videos or a bunch of reviews on all these new cars. Uh, you guys will get to enjoy those throughout the weekend. Uh, also, be stay tuned. I don't think I'll live stream from the track because data is hard to find. I might live stream from the motel or something, um, depending on what time I'm around there and whatnot. But uh, but anyway, guys, thank you all for coming into the, to the stream tonight. If you're interested in any of the cars you've seen or any of the other cars available, you can check them out at rasdiecast.com. Dot com. That's my uh, channel website. So that's how how to support the channel. And then um, also be sure to um, tune in for the uh, different diecast reviews as they come out. So um, like I said, it was fun to fun to have you all here. But I got to get ready to roll and get this stuff going for Bristol. So um, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next diecast review. <laughs>